So um, today I'm going to show you how you can set up your own um, DevOps setup. So particularly this one, so this image here. So we're going to have a separate Git workflow. So uh, this Git workflow is actually going to be feature branching, where you actually check out a new feature branch for a new feature and you work on it. And then later on, when you're done with the feature, you merge it back to the stable or master branch. And this will actually trigger the DevOps setup flow. And once that is triggered, uh, triggered sorry uh, this whole flow is continued so Jenkins actually captured uh, captures the the hook that comes in from github so you need to configure github appropriately with the um, proper web hooks and that will run the git um, Jenkins pipeline process so where it does all the building for the code making sure that the code has uh, no syntax errors and etc and then next uh, it will run the QA and the test uh, unit test be it acceptance test uh, in integration tests and um, all the tests and you know um, you're able to also store that into a um, report and also um, use plugins like um, tests and analyzer on Jenkins to um, show it on Jenkins and I'll teach you how to do that in in this video today and lastly the deployment stage is going to be uh, pretty simple so you're actually going to progress Jenkins will progress to the next stage in the pipeline where it will actually just deploy the the um, the image so the image is actually just going to be pushed to Docker Hub for this instance, and we pushed under, under um, pushed and tagged under the build number for um, based on Jenkins. So I'll explain what that build number means later on. So, but um, first, what we're gonna we're gonna actually gonna do is take a look at what's going on. So what, let's um take a look at the Docker file first and the Jenkins uh, file. So to give you some context, this is actually a maze game, a text-based uh, maze game. Uh, developed in uh, from one of my modules in school at, uh, as part of an assignment. So you can see um, the Docker file. This Docker file uh, simply just installs the current environment uh, you need to run the application. So in this case, it's a Python a command line application, and so we installed the different requirements um, stated in requirements.txt and term color. Uh, I couldn't install it in requirements.txt, so I had to uh, run a separate command here, and. As you can see, you're just copying all the stuff over, setting the work directory, and then copying the entire application over to the slash app directory. And we're also going to use the base image, uh, Python.3.7, because that's the um, version my team and I have uh, developed it in. Okay, so next thing, um, Jenkins files. So Jenkins files actually sets up the pipeline, so declaring what stages your um, your Jenkins is currently on. So to give yourself, uh, to show you an example, so these are the stages. So you can see the stage view and you can see each stage uh, has its own runtime and each stage uh, runs uh, one after the other. So in Jenkins.file, you actually declare. So this uh, syntax that you see here is actually the de declarative pipeline, but there's also a, a scripted pipeline, which is uh, used for older versions, which you can also use, but um, this is what I tested, it, I tested mine under. So first thing I did was to set up um, an agent. So agent none uh, just means I'm going to manually be setting all the agents uh, later on because uh, I'm actually going to deploy but deploy through Docker so I'm going to need both. So I'm also using the Docker workflow plugin here. So the Docker workflow plugin actually gives me the option to run all my um, stages within a um, Docker image or Docker container when it's running and then totally delete it afterwards. So this agent Docker file true um, just means that it will build a Docker container or a Docker image and run all your different steps within that. So in the initialized stage, I'm just setting up Docker, making sure that it's um, accessible. So um, you don't really need this if, if you don't want to do Docker, or uh, you can actually just run everything on the Jenkins uh, master node. So all you got to do is um, change the agent here to label master. And you need to make sure that in Jenkins, you have actually set up the node um, to label master. So once you've set that up, um, you can you know, individually um, at your own um, different stages. So you can see here that um, we, we have several stages. We have the initialize stage, which just initializes a Docker, the build stage, which actually just checks the Python version and uh, compile the code. So this pi underscore compile check just checks if the code has any syntax, if it's compiled properly and etc. So if it doesn't, it will fail and it will, ju it will just throw an error. And finally, the test stage. So we have a, a simple test stage here. So it's also going to be built in the Docker image and run in the, um, the image is going to be uh, converted and you know put into a container 
um, it's going to be built into a container and then the container is going to run all these different steps. So it's going to echo testing, it's going to run this PyTest, uh, PyTest coverage. So you can see dash dash cuff just gives you the coverage um, option, uh, prints out all the coverage uh, different, the, the, the coverage stuff. And then we've got the dash dash cuff uh, dash fill under 35. So this is just the um, minimum requirement that will actually fail. So py, this PyTest function will fail if um, the coverage is you know, not, um, you know, it's below this number. So we set it to 35 for now because we're not fully done with the test. And you're also going to need um, dash dash j unit xml equals to coverage.xml. So this uh, dash dash j unit xml equals to coverage.xml will actually um, allow you to explicitly define if uh, where you want to store your coverage um, results. So I've um, I've chosen the dash dash uh, I've chosen to store it under the j unit xml format because um, um, we actually use a, we're actually going to talk about the plugin uh, later on that will. Um, you know, format the test results as um, JUnit XML. So what you're gonna do is you have that set there so that you can um, do this later on. You can set the JUnit to um, pull from coverage.xml, and this is in the same directory. So um, it will be under um, the Docker file. It will be under slash app in the Docker container, or you know, um, in your root of, in the root of your um, your project here. So once you have all that set up you are actually gonna go over to Jenkins and configure the the, the um, pipeline. So um, do not do note this is a this project is actually a pipeline project so it, it might slightly differ from um, Jenkins jobs. So uh, Jenkins let me just briefly explain pipeline allows you to set uh, different stages different steps etc within each stage so it's a lot easier to um, take a look at the whole workflow at one glance. So I'm gonna click on configure. So I have uh, two different plugins. So one is the GitHub one. So that just um, sets up the GitHub, um, the GitHub connection, basically. So this plugin is uh, really important. So GitHub pull request builder. So this plugin is actually the one that allows you, um, whenever you trigger a hook, uh, whenever you trigger a pull request, it's actually gonna listen onto that, and it's gonna um, build, start a new build. So to configure this, you can actually just so install the plugin on Jenkins. So um, if you're using um, your own Jenkins, all you got to do is just go into um, Jenkins, manage Jenkins plugins, and then just look for GitHub pull requests builder. So you're gonna do that, and then all you have to, all you have to do is set up the credentials. So I'll show you how to do that in a, in a second. So you're gonna set up the credentials in the back end, which I'll show you in a second. But um, what you want to do is just have this checked. So make sure your own user is a an admin. Because otherwise you won't be able to trigger a um, pull request, and you're not going to be able, able to trigger a build trigger from the pull request. So um, to put it simply, um, the pipeline uh, you actually need a Jenkins file to to start it because Jenkins file allows you to say you know what exactly to do, etc., etc. So you can do this one or two ways. You can actually just type it out in. Um, it's going to open up an editor if you select pipeline script. But I've chosen mine. Uh, chosen to put mine in the um, source control management here. So use git, I'm connected to my repository and also under advanced, you want to set this. So I'll paste this link and a simple tutorial on how to trigger the um, I follow. So this is just going to say, oh, um, where, where, I'm gonna, where, where am I going to trigger it from and what, what branch exactly. So this branch is going to be the one that you trigger it um, from. So if you're opening, say, um, if you're going to open a new pull request um, from the branch, um, colors or whatever is actually going to trigger that build and you can see if we click onto this there's going to be a ton of um, some stuff we did here to set it up so once that's done uh, make sure you um, uncheck like check out too because there was, there was a bug uh, regarding so once you check out so once you're done just hit save and yeah you should be set um, so that that whole process will run and you also get tests um, result analyzers you can see all the different tests that failed in the previous build etc and you get a graph um, get a lot of stuff. So that's the whole um how to set up a simple, you know, DevOps workflow. So you basically got the developer. He com a uh, trigger uh, makes a PR and it triggers the RCS. The RCS um GitHub will send a webhook over. So I'm actually gonna I can't I'm not gonna show you the webhook, but you basically go into settings and then uh, settings of your repository. Uh, go into webhooks and make sure you add the proper webhooks for your project. 
So yeah, so once once that's done, it's going to trigger all the, it's going to follow the steps you've defined uh, or the stages you've defined in your Jenkins file. So based on that, it's going to you know do this, do that, follow the different stages. So for my case, my stages were initialize, build, test, and deploy, as you can see. And if I refresh this page, this is not the updated page. There you go. It, uh, it's passing. Yeah. So I'm just going to follow that. And it's going to, um, so for deployment, uh, since I, I, this was a, C, a CLI application, uh, we've decided to just, to just um, deploy it as in deploying where we know we just put it into a Docker image on Docker Hub. Yeah. So um, I think, let me just give some context on how you can actually deploy. Because uh, this 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 part this part here was is was a, a bit confusing for me, so you do need the Docker uh, workflow plugin because the dot build will will run it. And the reason, <coughs> sorry, the reason why you see um there are different agents here is because for each um stage we're actually we're actually setting the Jenkins slave or master um agent. Like, do we want what do we run uh, want to run this initialized stage um in? So in this case, the agent is here, a Docker file true. It's just going to build a new Docker image each time. And you can see here, we are just going to use the Jenkins um, master, master server to do the um, deployment stage because um, we couldn't, you can't get Docker within Docker for this. So if otherwise we have to change the Docker file and alter it accordingly. So this is actually a much, uh, it's an easier way to work around. So you're just going to, you know, build and based on the, it's going to actually build the uh, repo. So the repo here is actually this, the name of your Docker Hub and your repository. And then it's going to tag it with the build number. So if you go to Docker Hub, right, under the same uh, repository, you can see that we have several. So if I refresh this, there's going to actually going to be 16 now. Oh, I mean, there's going to be a number 16 or 17, sorry. Oh no, it's not there yet. Maybe I need to click see all. Oh, there you go. So we got 16, uh, 17, sorry. So it just came in um, 18, uh, 30 minutes ago. And because of the latest, it was also updated. So you can see that um, each um, image has its own um, version. So um, the, the sizes might differ a bit because the differences, um, the code inside is actually based on the different builds that you have for this. So let's say if I pull the code for 15, right? It's the code in 15 and the code for 17, the code, it's going to be the code for 17. So to do to actually run the the Docker the, the code inside, right? I'm going to show you something really cool. So um, I'm going to open up a new shell here. So you're gonna, you need um, Docker to run on your machine, uh, being on Mac or Windows, it doesn't matter. So what you're going to do is just pull the image. So I'm just um, going to show you how this briefly works. I didn't copy it, I think. So I'm going to pull the image here. And once you pull it, um, it's going to pull, pull the image 17. And I actually have a command that you can actually just go into the, you can extract um, the source code or rather just directly dive into the container. So um, because we pulled the image 17, right? So if we do, if we do Docker images, we're actually going to see 17 there. You can see 17 is here. So what we're going to do is just paste the command, which I can't copy again. I need to copy again. So Piece of command. Remember, everything after the colon is a tag. It's a tag for the image. So um, we're going to pull 17. So we're going to go into 17. So you can see that it goes into a shell. And what we can do here is actually just run the game. So if we do ls.alt, right? Sorry, that was my Discord. You can see the whole file, the whole project um, repository is actually here. So it's the same um, as um, all this. So it's actually the Docker image, that the exact image that was built when you deploy in the Jenkins file deployment stage here. So Simply what we can do is, you know, run the game. So if we just do Python 3, right? Python 3 game.py, that's how we run the maze game here. You can see that we can play the game. So it's actually pretty cool. Um, yo, look at that. I'm just, I'm just gonna move it down and get complete. So yeah, that is um, how you set up a DevOps workflow with um, the feature branching feature. So it's a very brief um, and I hope, I would like to think detailed explanation, but if there's anything you would like to discuss, you know, a better way you think this could be um, improved on, like maybe, um, I don't know, maybe this, um, maybe it could also read commits or, you know, multi, uh, you know, more feature branches, you know, more than one, 
or you know test feature branches against each other let me know and i'll i'll look into it and if it's interesting but yeah thanks for watching i hope this video gave you some clarity on um what exactly um jenkins pipeline um you know the whole pipeline stages are you know and how to set it up with a pull request a trigger a build trigger on jenkins yeah so good luck guys